Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe. Now, the best thing on this show. Yes. By oh. a thousand <laughs> miles. Oh my god, this next segment. Gorilla says, let's look at Martell and Zink. The real glamour boys of the WWF. How amazing <laughs> that tomorrow on AEW Dynamite, we are getting the Nothing debut. this good. We're getting the debut of the glamour. That's true. Mariah May. That's true. Which, by the way, since people have, uh, I, I, it's been pointed out to me that when she worked in the UK, she went as the glamour hmm. Mariah May. So if you don't like that she's called the glamour, if you choose to be the glamorous or whatever, not an AEW thing. This was what she was before she went to AEW, the glamour. And here we got the glamour, Rick Martell, and the glamour, Tom Zink. Yes. yes. Talking about being glamorous. So we cut to an empty locker room. And Martell and Zink walk in. <laughs> and, uh, correction, it is a set that just yes. has four <laughs> lockers on it. They didn't even have a actual... You know how easy it is to find a fucking locker room? <laughs> I'm sure they see Where the they time. were in this building had a locker room. But they went out of their way to make a fake locker room in a building <laughs> with an actual locker room. So they're there in the fake locker room. Four lockers and a bench is yes. all it was. And Martell walks in and shouts as loud as he can, All right, here we are, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so they get to conversation. Tom's thinking about the food they had last night in San Francisco. <sighs> and they cut to stock footage of the Golden Gate Bridge. They had so much stock footage. <laughs> And it was like, it was funny because it's, it wasn't even, like, th when they talk about San Francisco, they had footage of a trolley, okay? It looked like it was black and white footage that had been colorized. This looked like a trolley. It's like a stock footage from, like, 1916. The first trolley. <laughs> I'm like, holy fuck. They had seafood. In Beautiful San view and fresh seafood, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Ah, uh, Martel says, we did have great food there, but you know who else has great food is Montreal with that French cuisine. And the French girls. And they cut to, like, Montreal. There's a skyline shop. And then it's interior restaurant footage, and it's all women eating and women drinking. Lovely women, but yes. I think this is the one I was thinking of when I talked about these guys debuting and had a whole promo devoted to which t country has the best rats. This, uh... Then they got on the scale. <laughs> it was very important they weigh themselves yes. before their upcoming match with no weight limits. They weighed themselves. Got to make sure they're gaining weight. I just realized this was the Motley Crue girls, girls, girls video. Is it? When they, call, when they called out every strip club from here to Dallas. I gotcha. gotcha. So they so weigh themselves. As they weigh in the scale, step on the scales, now Zank, Zank has to stand up for a New, uh, an American city. New York City. The nightlife. And the women. Yes, yes, Tommy. New York is fine. But Canada has a great city you can't compare it to. It's Toronto. And his footage of Toronto went up. Now, what you're, what you're skimming over, Vinny, is as they are going back and forth talking about cities, they also are not only weighing themselves, yes. but they are admiring each other's bodies. Yes. My God, Tom. Mm -hmm. Looking Tom, jacked today, brother. Tom, you look great. Tom has taken his shirt off to do some bicep curls. And, and the thing is, is Zank is wearing only his wrestling trunks, which are white. Mm-hmm. So essentially, he's standing there in only his underwear. That's right. Talking about visiting all of these cities mm -hmm. and doing curls. Mm -hmm. there, he's, he's curling as they talk about New York. Yeah, well, what about Toronto? And he's curling his weights. And I swear to God, they go back and forth. They're trying to outdo each other. Yeah, well, my, my city's got lots of lovely ladies. Oh, yeah, well, what about that other city? And the final line here. Is Tom Zenk says, you know, Rick, I'll show you some of my towns if you show me some of your spots. Mm -hmm. And away they go. <laughs> I'll show you some of my towns if you show me some of your spots. That's right. That's how this ended. Off they went. It almost looked as though they were not looking for ladies. I just want to mention, I don't know why it's important to me, but as Tom is doing his bicep curls, I got to get in shape, he says. Got to go skiing in Vail, Colorado, up in the Rockies. 
He's, and he says this as if the Rockies are exclusive to the United States of America. Yes, they are. <laughs> and Martel is exactly what I was thinking. Well, wait, do you see the Canadian Rockies? Yes. All I know was when this is done, if they had just aired this on a loop a dozen times in a row for an hour, greatest wrestling show of all time. I loved this so much. It was so horrible. So here's the it was thing. Great. Here's the thing. Brandon here says kind of pretty deadly vibes. Absolutely mm, wrong. No. Absolutely no, wrong. wrong. Because pretty deadly is doing the gay gimmick. That's outright what it is. They want you to think that they're an item. Mm -hmm. These guys, and they yeah. did this all the time in the 80s. This was far from the only video yeah. package or, or music video or whatever, where it's two, they're supposed to be two straight guys looking for women. Yeah. yeah. But they're naked together, <laughs> curling and admiring each other's bodies. Yeah. And you're just looking at it like, what? What is happening here? Like, what? Yes. Like, pretty deadly, pretty deadly. Doing a gear gimmick would not be able to do this. They could not bring themselves to do this. They'd be too much of it. would be like, hold on a second, wait a minute now. But back then, that's what they did. Yeah. If anything, these guys are still in the locker. I mean, closet. Sadly, I cannot just watch this over and over again as much as I wanted to. It was amazing. The Hart Foundation and Adrian Adonis versus Paul Roma, Tony Gurria, and Jim Parks. Tony Gurria was 41 years old here. I don't know how old Jim Parks was, but he looked 401. <laughs> The hearts are half assing this. There's all, even Brett was like, everyone looks clumsy. Well, why the fuck would they do anything more? It was like a two minute match, yeah. nothing to it, a total letdown, and a waste of time. Adon they should have just shown that uh, Martell and. Thank you. Yeah, they <laughs> should have shown that again. Added six more cities on there. Yeah. 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 What about Buffalo? <laughs> <laughs> they would have gotten there eventually. <laughs> that McMenamins. I just see a ranch. There's a nice ranch in yeah. Buffalo. Yeah, you ever been to the. Ranch burger? <laughs> I want to note that when Adrian Donna's finished Jim Parks with the Goodnight Irene, the sleeper hold, Gorilla referred to this man as a youngster. <laughs> Jim Parks? Jim Parks. Pretty sure Who, Pretty sure Jim Parks was... Uh, older than Gorilla. Yeah. This dude is not young. He was trained by Methuselah. <laughs> he voted for Miller Fillmore. <laughs> yeah, he, he was his running mate. <laughs> It is time for a special Piper's Pit with Jesse Ventura. This is another one. You know what is so amazing about this storyline? Is, as we'll get to, I mean, it's the next match. It's Jake Roberts and Gary Starr. And they are, it's Hogan and, it's, it's Heenan and Gorilla again ignoring the match, which is fine because the match is 30 seconds and it's pointless. But they're just talking about Hogan and Andre. And Bobby Heenan is going on and on about this, this story. And... Gorilla Monsoon, the poster boy for toxic positivity before it was even a, a phrase or a term, he's like, this whole thing is just blown out of proportion. He's certain there's nothing to this story. He's a babyface. So on Piper's Pit, Jesse Ventura, who is a heel, he comes out and keep in mind, this is a man who once hosted a conspiracy television show. It's true. <laughs> he says... Piper says, you know, Ventura, you're just stirring up trouble with these trophies. And Jesse says, you know, this Andre reinstatement's fishy. He says, Andre, he wasn't even there. And Bobby Heenan was there. And as you know, they're bitter enemies. But Andre got reinstated. And this caused me to wonder what's going on here. Because nobody hides nothing from me, he says. And he says, I went out and I found out what was going on. And you can't believe what is coming down. And I know what's going to happen. And Roddy has no idea what he's talking about. He wants to know what the secret is. And Jesse's like, imagine you've got a crown jewel. A big jewel that only you've got. He says, I'm not sharing it with anybody. But I can tell you what's happened here. It's worse than Watergate. Worse than... I ran gate, he says. It's worse than all of it. I know and nobody else knows and I'm not talking. And so the heel, Jesse Ventura, has this all figured out. And he's right. And all of the baby faces 
think there's nothing to this story. Everything's fine. There's no problem with Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. Gorilla, I never noticed a gorilla's gimmick is to be the idiot in the room. Mm -hmm. That's what it always is. He always thinks everything is fine. Even though when everything, it's clear everything is not fine with this Hogan Andre thing. So anyway, he talks about the trophies and, you know, look at Hogan's. Look at how much bigger Hogan's trophy is. Andre's been undefeated 15 years, Hogan. What, three years? And he goes, Hogan's trophy. This thing's made of real solid gold. And this other one here, what, it's made of iron? And he said rotten old leather. Rotten old leather? <laughs> Which was odd. <laughs> he says, you and me, Piper, we can settle this in the ring, or we can get Hogan and Andre out here for a discussion. Andre owes me a favor, he says. I'll get him here next week. Can you produce Hogan? Piper says, damn straight I can. And so next week, Hogan and Andre are going to be on Piper's pit. And we're going to get this whole thing figured out. This was quite great. Oh, yeah. But goddamn, these baby faces are so fucking dumb. Piper, Hogan's a blind idiot. Gorilla Monsoon is the biggest fucking dummy. Heenan's been telling him every week, and Gorilla won't listen. I can't wait. I I don't even give a shit about the angle. I can't wait until the post angle when I got to hear Gorilla backtrack. Or however he's going to handle it. The uh, the first week was the one where Hogan got a trophy, and the second week, Andre got a trophy. Yes. And this week, just to drive the point home, they put the trophies together. Next to each other. Next together, so you could see the discrepancy in size. And uh, if if you were the dumb person at home that wasn't adding all this up, this really drove it home. So, yes, that was awesome. I did laugh at the part where uh, Jesse asked, why wasn't Andre at his own Rena statement hearing? And Roddy couldn't help himself and just says, well, have you heard him talk? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.